In the space of a few short weeks, life as we knew it has been turned upside down and inside out, and a virus that was until recently completely unknown has utterly changed the course of all of our lives. In times of tragedy, upheaval and uncertainty, people need constants, familiar voices that they can trust. As the commercial news provider with the biggest audiences and greatest reach in Britain, ITV News has fulfilled its role as a public service broadcaster. This then is our story of the past few weeks. ITV is Britain's biggest commercial channel, long established and available free to everyone. We give this everything we've got. No doubt about it. You ready? It offers drama, high quality entertainment. The winner of Britain's Got Talent, Los Voiska! Free to air sport. It's in! Factual and daytime programming. What was the last information that you'd heard? That not everyone wants me to come back. In normal times, our news and current affairs programmes reach millions of viewers across the country. George, maybe you first, your initial reaction? Well, we are entering the Boris Johnson era of British politics. Delivering impartial news and useful practical information on TV and on digital outlets. YTV News Central. Green Sands. The Peak District. Wrexham. We're live in Dublin. Tonight, we're going to do things a little differently. When coronavirus hit, all our news programmes stayed on air. ITV News has played a vital public service during the COVID-19 crisis, informing millions of viewers across Britain about the key public health messages and also reporting on events in every community across the country. As the corona crisis developed abroad, ITV News' role was more important than ever. Three weeks on from the first reports of this virus, it has now spread to almost all of China's 23 provinces. And as it came closer to home, its severity soon became evident. This virus has all the qualities of one that could cause a very concerning global pandemic. So for the time being, the NHS will have to remain on high alert with all the extra burden of work that that brings it. It was a slow motion breaking news story that you could see coming towards you but couldn't quite work out what to do. And I think um, even though we knew it was coming, no one was quite prepared for what that would mean for our everyday lives when it got here. I think right from the beginning, we wanted to be absolutely sure that we were factually correct, that we were delivering the message clearly, accurately. We couldn't afford to get this wrong in any way at all because it was just too important. I thought Brexit might have been the biggest story of my career, but look at where we are now. This is a story which is huge locally, it's huge nationally and internationally. For me, as a reporter in a very specific part of the ITV News Network, it's really given me an opportunity to get even more deeply rooted into the communities that I'm reporting from. This coronavirus emergency has been something that has touched everybody's lives. Across 37 main sites and bureaus in the UK and with reporters around the world, teams have worked around the clock, continuing to get out vital information and stories to the public at a time of national crisis. People want someone to be straight with them. Ultimately, we're the only ones who can say, this is what we've seen, these are the stories we've heard, this is how we believe it is. The biggest challenge has been getting used to a brand new way of working virtually overnight and getting our heads around social distancing. I mean, many of us didn't even know what that word meant. We've had to adapt and change very quickly in how we've been operating in lockdown, how we've gathered our news, how we've filmed on location. It's all happened in a very short period of time. It's a credit to everyone involved and quite extraordinary to see. But it was also a story that affected each and every one of our reporters, staff and families. Many more families are going to lose loved ones before their time. As the Prime Minister announced the lockdown on March the 23rd... From this evening, I must give the British people a very simple instruction. You must stay at home. ITV News bore witness to the uncertainty and fear across the country. The government has a lockdown in force. Please get off the green, go home. Are you here on an essential trip? You need, you need to go home? Particularly amongst the elderly 
and those clinically vulnerable. Stop going outside. <laughs> Don't give this to somebody else. They say that we should stay in and isolate from COVID. But some of these people are frightened of starvation and being on their own. And as cases at home increased and deaths mounted, there were shocking developments. Stay at home for them, the two nurses who died of COVID-19 on Britain's deadliest day yet. A very significant development tonight. The Prime Minister has been moved to intensive care. Nearly a thousand recorded deaths with coronavirus in 24 hours. People were turning to trusted news to try to comprehend a story that had fundamentally changed all our lives. But I don't think I've ever covered a story where I feel like the hunger from the audience to really understand everything that's happened and what it means for them has been quite at the level of this. As key workers, we had a duty to get our programmes on air and safely, despite the unprecedented risks around us. Right from the beginning of the crisis, we took the view that it was absolutely essential that ITV news programmes, both national and regional, stayed on air throughout the crisis. But also that we did so whilst our staff were safe and members of the public were safe. Viewing figures at the height of the crisis were up 50% for lunchtime network news, 26% for news at 10 and 20% for our regional news bulletins. Internationally, so what do I say to the science? I say I don't believe your science because I believe my God. Nationally. The burning question is why the corona pandemic is having such a devastating and disproportionate impact on the British Muslim community and other ethnic and minority communities in this country. And regionally. Frontline staff have finally been issued with personal protection equipment and sanitizers, but that's thanks to local gin and paint companies. Yours is full of gin. 70% proof, it says. Our coverage has spanned the world, and we've seen compelling frontline reporting from where the pandemic began in Wuhan. What started out as an illness between co workers at this seafood market has quickly spread across China and beyond its borders, presenting the authorities with a huge global challenge to contain an infection they don't yet understand to a hard-working intensive care unit in Bournemouth. The majority of the patients here have been on the intensive care ward for a very long time. Many of them have been ventilated for more than three weeks. Our work in the ICU was mainly to get first-hand experience of what was going on in a hospital. I think filming in an intensive care was probably one of the hardest things I have ever done for ITV News. I don't think I had quite prepared myself uh, for the uh, intensity and the sheer emotion that I felt when we walked in there. But I think as journalists we had a duty during this national crisis to go in and really see firsthand what was happening. Across the regions and nations, we've continued to report on how coronavirus has been affecting local communities. This story has played out in many different ways across the ITV regions and nations and what's been so impressive is how our teams have responded. Their local knowledge has been the key to getting this story right. They know what's happening around them and that's reflected in their coverage. The role of regional news is also incredibly important. We have a real connection to our viewers that maybe isn't quite the same as the national news. We have broadcast thousands of news bulletins since the start of the outbreak, bringing our viewers the stories that mattered. Her dad, Nadir, was a career bus driver in London, but within weeks of this video being filmed, he was dead. There wasn't really adequate guidelines to protect um, bus drivers and other key workers. There was important interrogation of those in charge. ITV London has been crucial, but it's also been really important in holding me to account and holding others in positions of power to account to make sure I'm challenged, to make sure I understand the concerns of Londoners and I'm addressing them. This is the biggest story that any of us have had to tell. I think we've got a huge role to play in holding people to account, you know, whether that is the government, whether that's a local authority or our local councils. 
National News, our specialist correspondents have given clear insight into government policy and well-informed analysis and critique of how it is implemented, like testing. One of the reasons they ended up increasing capacity was because you know, places, you know, broadcasters like us shone a very broad, you know, bright light on how testing could massively help us get on top of this awful illness. And exposure of apparent failures by those in charge, like in Paul Brand's packages looking at the devastating impact on care homes. Do you now recognise that while you've prevented the NHS from becoming overwhelmed, there is now a crisis in the care sector and given that the number of deaths continues to go up in care homes each day, will it now be your main priority? And we've continued to cover the most important stories abroad. Everywhere you look in this cemetery, there's row upon row of freshly dug graves. Confirmation that Brazil now has the highest daily death rate of any country in the world. And perhaps even more frightening, one of the lowest testing rates in business. Recession is technically defined as two quarters in succession of negative GDP. We've had one, but it is... And we're going to get a second, aren't we? Well, it, it is right that we've, you know, we've had one, and that's on the basis of only several days, really, of significant disruption from coronavirus. So, yes, it is now very likely that the UK will face a significant recession this year. And in politics. So I drove the three of us up to Durham that night, arriving roughly at midnight. I did not stop on the way. When I woke the next morning, Saturday the 28th of March, I was in pain and clearly had COVID symptoms, including a bad headache and a serious fever. As a result of all this, research from Reuters and Ipsos show that trust levels for TV are higher than for other news sources. And the public say most broadcast journalists are doing a good job in holding the government to account. We set out right from the beginning to make sure that we were identifying and capturing those people who were falling through the cracks and being able to still go out and bring their stories and highlight to government these people need thinking about as well. I spoke to viewers from across the country about their expectations of television news during this crisis and what they felt they needed from us. We rely on, on the credibility of the reporters that they are presenting uh, something that is factual. I trust uh, ITV. Um, I trust them to, to deliver news that that is accurate. And in terms of clarity and the news explaining what you need to know at the various stages of this crisis, what have you made of that? I often think, and especially with uh, Boris's speech on Sunday, is that the way he speaks, um, doesn't necessarily always translate down into the way your average UK citizen would speak and comprehend. Whereas I think you then take that, and, that news that he's you know, broadcast to the nation and portray it in a way that's much easier to digest and make relevant to you. What have you made of our coverage, both at national and regional level? I think that, you know, there hasn't been a regurgitation of, of news stories and items. And so it's been it's been good to get stories, a broad base of stories, um, regionally and, and nationally, I feel. Our coverage has always held people at its heart, bringing relatable stories to our audience at times of crisis. I would say we're about people, we're not about policies in their most objective form. We like to illustrate stories with real people. We just want to get everybody's stories out there as accurately as possible. Through the glass is the only contact Sarah Moore from Huddersfield now has with her children. Emotionally for me, there hasn't a day gone by where I've not cried, where I just want to see and hold my kids. Um, but I know that for their safety and for my eldest's health, I can't do that. When you hear from people who are directly affected by the disease, it really brings it home. Stop going out. Listen to Boris. And just don't go out, it's not worth it. We have sadly had to cover countless stories of loss and families in grief. I did a letter for Dad um, explaining everything, you know, how I felt, what I felt. Oh. What did you say in the letter? Loved him. 
It's all right, Haley. It's like a pit a hole in your tummy. We've also reported on the many survivors and of families reunited, like our coverage of four-year-old Mila Snedden from Falkirk, one of the many stories that captured the heart of the nation and who we followed being reunited with her father after seven weeks. Hi, Daddy! Hi, Mila, how are you? Mila's going through chemotherapy. Her dad had to keep going to work, so he moved out to protect his daughter. This has been as close as they could get to a daddy and daughter hug. But today would be different. Because I'm going to come home today. Today? Right now. Right now. Hi. Can I get a real hug? Yeah. Yeah? Yes. <laughs> oh, I love you. How are you? Local heroes have been covered, sometimes leading on to a national story like ITV News Anglia's coverage about Captain Tom's walk for the NHS that has been so defining in this crisis. For many of us, life has slowed down a little or a lot as we're having to stay at home, but for one 99-year-old war veteran, he's decided to get moving. Tom Moore from Bedfordshire is walking 100 lengths of his own garden before his 100th birthday, all to raise money for the NHS. By the time it comes to my birthday, I shall be doing more than 100 that we, I said I'd do. I'm planning to do more than 100. In cities worst affected, like Birmingham, we've seen the growing pressures funeral directors are under. The toll growing, the coffins running out. When does that order come in? Monday. And the, the other one, you know, the, the, the order after that, uh, how long is that going to take? Two weeks. And the suppliers are working around the clock. And as new evidence has become available, we've also shown the stories of the communities who have been worst affected. Dero Guled, a carer, has seen the virus devastate her family. I don't want to really, you know, pick up the phone call. You're just constantly worried and you're frightened. Who's next or what's going to happen again? Or who's been taken to hospital? Six, five. Using technology and innovation, ITV News adapted quickly to change circumstances, reaping the benefits of the multi-million pound investments that have been made over the last decade. OK, whenever you're ready. Adhering to government guidelines, social distancing measures were introduced in all our offices, in the studio and on location. Those in the office were kept to a minimum and at the peak of the lockdown, around 80% of colleagues worked from home. I have to do quite a lot more from home. Actually, I was in quarantine for a bit, so I had to, uh, I had to broadcast at home uh, for the full 14 days. And uh, now I do quite a lot of broadcasting from home. Is it possible to exit the lockdown unless and until we have a programme of mass testing? At ITV Cymru Wales, the team has quickly got to grips with the new way of working. It's been amazing to see how people have adapted and reacted to the challenge so quickly. You know, within a couple of weeks, people have really mastered a new way of working to deliver a news programme that remains engaging, relevant uh, and up to the minute. Finding creative ways of boosting the impact of a story, including capturing strong images of life in lockdown and thought creatively when juggling reporting and homeschooling. The report suggests that almost 50% of parents are concerned their children will fall behind with their studies. And a third of parents are worried they can't establish a routine or ensure the work is getting done. Across the board, ITV has managed to get over 60 hours of national and local news on air a week. Hello there, welcome to the programme. This morning we learnt the number of people claiming... And critically, our regional and national news programmes have taken great care to reflect their localities back to the audience. It's just been uh, weird to see goats uh, going around the streets uh, and, and just uh, taking over. The ITV Cymru Wales team has been determined to deliver stories that matter to the nation. 
and reporters have even shared insight into their own difficult circumstances at home. You have a lot of anxiety still about what will happen if one of us gets coronavirus. If I got it, you would still, still need somebody to care for you. It's probably my worst nightmare that you got it. The team has reinforced important public health messages to stay at home. The NHS staff are doing some sterling, sterling work, but the key message that she wanted me to give to you today is to stay at home so that we can look after our communities. And crucially, has held power to account. How will you enforce the local area restrictions? Um, would you expect people to inform on others and wouldn't that lead to social division? Uh, well, um, I don't think it's a matter of people informing on one another. That's certainly not been the spirit in which the current restrictions uh, have been enforced in Wales. And I think all Getting those answers directly, that shows the value of those long-term relationships of trust based on fair dealing. It shows the value of that in the longer term and in a crisis like this. We have something very special for you this evening, arranged and performed especially for Wales at Six. Now Ruth and I haven't seen this either, so we're watching together. Take a look. And the newsroom's been keen to show how communities are coming together to support and motivate each other. So this is the Brinsley Social Distancing Dance. It all started off as a bit of exercise, a little socialising with suitable space left around you, and it's sort of grown from there. This gives me a reason to get up by 11 o'clock, you know, we're all dressed, we're all out. Throughout, they've remained close to their audience of all ages, even doing cookery lessons over Skype. Lifting spirits during lockdown, Aaron's been sharing positivity and recipes. His biggest hit, his famous shortbread. And today, Aaron's going to be teaching me how to make shortbread so that you can have a go at home. I think I've gained the confidence to really direct our case studies and our participants to film things within their own homes, to show us little bits of their life with their own iPhones or their own video cameras. And so kind of sharing the job of the journalist with our case studies. With the nation in lockdown, the importance of trusted news and current affairs programmes in English and in Welsh that are made for Wales, for audiences in Wales, has perhaps never been more apparent. There is, I've always believed, a real skill in journalism, which is to take complex material and being able to boil it down to its essence and then communicate that to people in a very few words. It's very important to have Welsh sources of news that people can rely on, that they regard as trustworthy. So regional media is very important to us. It's more likely to be accurate because it's more in tune with Welsh specific circumstances and decisions. And viewers have been appreciative too. I think that what I've seen is this feeling that our news programme really provides something for everybody, really represents every faction of Welsh society and gives them the information that they need in this really difficult and confusing time. Viewers have told us they found regional programmes a reassuring presence in their lives, as some familiar faces have also had to shield themselves. How are you doing? I'm doing fine, Sangeeta. I hope you are too and all of our lovely viewers. I still miss them terribly. I've discovered gardening and I've discovered I'm quite good at it. When all this is over, Alan Titchmarsh, watch out. Amongst the tragedy, heartache and lives taken too soon, we've also sought those uplifting stories, celebrating the best in the human spirit that remind viewers of the light in all this darkness. That's right, when you hear the sound of trumpets on this street in Huddersfield, you know it's time to rush out and start chewing your heart out for the NHS. But one woman who never We try to bring something a little bit positive at the end of each programme, something that's going to just make people feel a little bit better. And that just gives everyone a lift, including me. And what more could demonstrate coming together than ITV's NHS Day? 
It is a special day here on ITV, a day the channel is dedicating to NHS workers, thanking them for the work they are doing to save lives during the pandemic. Across the entire channel and every region and nation, we devoted our programming to support the One Million Claps Day. It helped raise over £1 million with the focus on the NHS and other care workers, those with the virus, recovering and those performing good deeds. Well, I think that the dedication of ITV, of NHS Day is fantastic. Every Thursday, we also paused programming for Clap for Carers and raised money for NHS charities together. OK. Let's put those hands together. Our NHS Day was part of a much broader ITV mindset, ensuring we always bring our audience a sense of togetherness. NHS, love you. love you. Back with our audience members, did they think we were getting this right? I think it's so important to strike a balance between the serious news and also the, you could say, the human positive news because the last thing we want is to overwhelm the public with so many negative stories that the best thing they want to do is to switch off the TV. I do like the way that you seem to end a lot of the news nationally with a happy story, with an upbeat story, and I think that's really important. But usually I'm one of those sort of people that are like, I don't watch the news, it's all a load of rubbish, it depresses me. <laughs> and I'm not gonna, I've always been that sort of person. Um, and then my friend actually told me to have a look at ITV News, like you'll get what you need, but it's not too much. But I love that you give us, this is what's happening guys, we have to be aware of the facts. I get everything I get from other news stations, except to get a cuddle at the end. OK, well, that's like, I'm going to think it? of it in very different terms now. A cuddle at the end of the bulletin. <laughs> cuddle! <laughs> it's not just on the airwaves where ITV has been making strides in delivering trusted, quality journalism. Digital has been working across social media, podcasts and the ITV websites to attract younger and diverse audiences with innovative content. I think one of the key things about uh, digital is that ability to reach new audiences in new types of ways. And one way that ITV has done that in particular is with The Rundown. Hey, I'm Amani and this is The Rundown. Hope you're having a nice weekend. Here's some of today's top stories. The Rundown is a social media news service for young people aged between 13 and 17. And during the crisis, we've actually launched on Snapchat, which has meant we're able to reach millions and millions of young people in a new way that ITV hasn't actually done before. We won an award uh, for best launch of the year. The, the Rundown only actually launched in September and since then we've been going out seven days a week uh, to reach young people and to be, you know, that, to be acknowledged and be awarded for that is a, is a really great thing. More broadly across ITV News, we now have 53 million web views a month, up from 19 million a year ago, with many more on Twitter and Facebook. One of the remarkable things that we saw right at the beginning of this crisis was the amount of hunger for regional news. We've seen across our websites and across our social media, in some cases tripled but generally doubled the amount of audience in our regions and that goes right across the ITV News regional network. And there's been the launch of a weekly podcast during the pandemic too, with in-depth analysis of the crisis and featuring special guests and their stories in lockdown. And I'm delighted to say from lockdown, joining us today, Sir Trevor MacDonald. Julie, it's lovely to talk to you. It's all culminated in forging new relationships with audiences right across the country. It just shows the value of ITV News, the value of quality news. At a time of crisis, people are coming to us, not just on programmes, but online and digital platforms as well. With our long-form commissions, we've been able to explore the stories behind the headlines in greater depth. Farms across the UK now fear that thousands of tonnes of food could simply go to waste because they haven't got enough workers for the harvest, starting right now. Tonight has been informing viewers about the threat since January, with record viewing figures when the lockdown hit. And since then, approaching the story from a variety of angles that matter to our audience. From focusing on the elderly in Britain, Hands. to cheering on our NHS to everybody that looked after my parents I thank you with all of my heart thank you and inspiring stories of courage and survival <laughs> 
Thankfully, the results came back negative, and she was able to return to duty today and be reunited with her daughter. I think when it comes to current affairs, um, we're able to offer more depth, more perspective, whether that's on PPE, on, say, Trump's response to the pandemic, on the race for a vaccine or a cure, what's been happening in our hospitals. We're able to accumulate you know, a much broader and longer fall. Our coronavirus Q&A has brought the answers to people's questions. So let's start with this question from Amanda. She wants to know, my neighbours have been meeting friends and family in their gardens. Is this allowed? Well, as I think Amanda suspects, these kind of garden gatherings... Martin Lewis has done weekly specials on the impact on people's finances. Well, we've got lots going on. Of course, you can ask me your questions, whether it's on furloughing or self-employment or the big one coming up all the time. They won't give you a refund when something has been cancelled and Peston has held power to account. One of the things the government is refusing to do is talk about the how and why and when of easing this, these extraordinary restrictions. I've, I've called on them to publish their exit strategy. The past couple of months have been a monumental challenge for all of us. The unique circumstances of the lockdown have meant new ways of working for British broadcasters, and ITV has had to adapt and innovate to stay on air. The role of news is vitally important at this time because people's lives have been turned upside down by this story, either indirectly or directly. Collectively, to think what we are doing is the essence of, you know, why we have public service broadcasting. I can't think of another story uh, that I've ever been involved in which, um, of which that's true. I think the people of ITV News have shown great imagination and innovation in finding ways to work in different ways to keep ITV News both nationally and regionally on air throughout this crisis. And as a result, they've been able to give ITV viewers the information they've needed in their lives to deal with one of the most difficult periods of life for so many people across the country. And ITV, as a public service broadcaster, has risen to the occasion at a moment of national crisis.